So apparently YouTube videos can only be 10 minutes in length, so here's part two. Okay, so we've built out our design a little bit, and so now that we have our design complete, the next task is going to be to document the design. So Inventor is going to allow users to add a level of clarity to the model where an engineering level of detail is required. And you know it's important to not only make design intent clear, but also have the ability to deliver that design intent and make sure that when I communicate to users downstream uh, in 2D or 3D that uh, there's no question uh, as to what the design is, uh, you know, what it's made of, uh, and so on and so forth. So delivery of that intent uh, a lot of times requires a number of different formats. And so here's a key advantage to Inventor in this case. So our ability to create shop drawings, uh, details, uh, exploded views, assembly instructions, bills of material, cut lists, AutoCAD blocks, balloons, <laughs> Uh, so on and so on and so on. Uh, I won't bore you with the list. Um, but I'm able to create these various forms of deliverables. And here's the key, here's the key about this, guys. I'm able to create these as a matter of consequence and not as a reinterpretation of intent um, in every transition of, say, a building project, a manufacturing process. doesn't matter. Um, but if I can just create shop drawings, detail views, exploded views, just essentially automatically, and that's what I mean by a matter of, uh, of consequence, um, automatically, um, and they communicate those downstream, it really enhances um, you know, the value of the tool that I'm using to uh, communicate my design. So you're going to hear a lot about BIM, uh, Billing Information Modeling, here uh, c coming out if you haven't already. Um, another thing that you're going to hear a lot about is uh, a, a contractual process called integrated project delivery. And without a, uh, a BIM project, um, you, you essentially cannot achieve the objectives behind uh, a construction project that is integrated project delivery. So, you know, your ability to communicate this uh, downstream, you know, hear something as uh, something like... Uh, uh, assembly instructions, animated assembly instructions in, in this case, as part of a uh, shop drawing bid package, you're probably more apt to win the business than if you were, um, you know, just passing off, uh, you know, your standard 2D PDFs or um, DWGs even, um, and uh, you might get a better chance of winning that that, that bid. So uh, back to the uh, back to the 2D drawing, as you can see. Um, I had quite a bit of information hosted in this uh, this inventor DWG file, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to publish this out as a DWF. Now, this DWF, when you publish out of Inventor, it's going to package up everything. So here I, uh, I'm in Design Review, which is the free viewer for DWF, and it looks almost exactly like the interface uh, in Inventor. Only I'm able to break down the elements um, that I want to view. So there's a cut list, there's the 2D file, and here's the 3D file, our 3D representation, uh, if you will, of this DWF. And take a look at this. I click on that 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 part, and then I scroll down into the into the properties. Remember how I used the miter tool? Well, it remembered the miter angle, and even that is communicated in with that DWF. So imagine changing your whole submittal process to DWF format, where you can include 2D, 3D. Here you're going to see the, <laughs> the animated assembly instructions even as part of this package. Post this up to a buzzsaw or streamline, and you'll be off and running. Now along with, and, and this, is, this is really a key point here, guys, um, along with our ability to publish the DWF to complete package, uh, maybe you would like to include then a, uh, a package file that can be consumed by all of our uh, all of our BIM tools. So Revit architecture, Revit structure, Revit MEP, including our AutoCAD verticals that are focused around AEC. AutoCAD architecture, AutoCAD MEP. I want to simplify this design through the use of AEC Exchange. So here's a shrink wrap. Now what shrink wraps does is it simplifies your design. It takes out all the intellectual property that maybe you wouldn't want to exchange with an architect. And I'm going to do another video on that uh, all together, guys. So um, 
you know, don't uh, don't worry too much about the details behind that. I will do a follow-up video on AC Exchange. But you know, essentially here, what I'm doing is I'm preparing the information that I want to share with an architect, and I'm publishing it out into a package file that, like I said, can be consumed by all forms of Revit as well as our vertical AutoCAD applications, um, AutoCAD architecture and uh, Revit MEP. So if you've never seen Revit, this is this is how it would work. So you, you published out the ADSK file. The Revit user simply opens up the, uh, uh, the ADSK file and it creates a Revit family part. And you can see there's not a lot of detail. There's an appropriate level of detail for an architect to include this in with their design. Pretty slick, right? Now, in addition to that, any view that you create in Inventor, so you saw me place that view, the exploded view, and so on and so forth, that view, when saved as a, in Inventor DWG, each one of those becomes a native AutoCAD block. So if I take a look at the uh, the properties here in AutoCAD, you saw that I just used um, the Design Center to just drag and drop those blocks onto my AutoCAD file so I can do detailing. Now, that awesome, awesome commercial that I showed right at the beginning of this with the, uh, uh, I mean, it was cool. I had I brought in audio and everything for you. I hope you hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. How did I do that? Did did I have to recreate something altogether in a completely different format? Absolutely not. I fired up Autodesk Showcase. I brought in my inventor model, and here I'm just I'm just applying some some materials. So, you know, I want to use uh, aluminum there. Uh, maybe I want some sort of fabric on the uh, uh, on the on the tensile fabric here. I want it when, when it gets rendered out. I want it to look like fabric. So, then I'll just use one of the default environments that's inside of of, uh, of Showcase. Uh, to bring you know to bring in the background view, and this is a it's a real time rendering right here, guys. It, I didn't have to hit render. This is all in real time. It's not edited out. So place the canopy structure in in this little uh, mall area. Um, I'll bring in another one too, um, but essentially to create an animated shot of this, I just go and I say create new shot give me a zoom in or a zoom out type feature over a period of certain time and let's see what it looks like and as you can see it's kind of panning around a little bit to the left give me a nice cinematic camera shot and I'm not a camera guy I don't know anything about um, you know making uh, I certainly uh, would, uh, would would be lost in, in, in a place like Pixar or something but it, again I was able to repurpose that model within showcase to create this killer presentation so there we go I mean it, it really wasn't that hard I was able to reuse this information uh, and create different deliverables again as a matter of consequence and not as a reinterpretation of intent so hey um, this one's getting long uh, I'm gonna cut this one off and we'll uh, uh, the next one we'll do here is gonna be about AC exchange simplifying your, your design and communicating with architects so uh, this will be a series um, when we talk about creating BIM ready content out of Inventor. Hope you enjoyed it. Please, please, please comment and uh, hope to hear from you guys. We'll talk to you soon.